guys, how's it going? I'm out in the vegetable garden today getting ready to plant a few things for fall harvest. So I just wanted to talk about some of the stuff that you could be planting in your own garden. So I recently cleaned out a couple of areas. I've got this spot right here in this raised bed. I had celery growing here and beets and basil and the chickens are feasting on the remains of those crops right now. Uh, and then I've got one other bed where I'm going to be planting some greens. Um, and basically you can plant anything this time of year that has enough time to mature in the time you have left in your season. And to figure that out, it's super easy. All you have to do is figure out your first average frost date. And you might already know that. Like I know in our area at Garden Zone 5, we typically have a first frost around the first part of October um, or maybe even to the middle of October. If you don't know what your date is, you can Google it. Just type in first average frost date with your zip code and it'll come right up. Um, and that way you can plan. So then you count back from that date to the date you're planting and that's how many days you have for your crops to mature. So typically people are planting things like carrots, beans, broccoli, cauliflower, some short day cabbages. Um, you can do some basil, parsley, uh, greens. I'm gonna be planting some spinach today. I would probably, if it's still really hot in your area, um, which it is starting to cool off a little bit. In fact, it's kind of sprinkling on me right now, which is so weird for our area. It's really refreshing, but if it's still really hot, I would wait on stuff like radishes and lettuce and let it get a little bit cooler before you start doing those. And those are such short day crops that you can start those typically at, toward the end of August and still be okay. Um, today I am planting some spinach called America, um, organ sugar pod peas, and zinnias. And you can find on the back of the seed packets how many days to maturity each crop takes. So like on this um, organ sugar pod pea packet, if I turn it around, you can see the maturity date of this crop is 68 days. And I'm gonna be pushing it a little bit with this crop. But the beauty of it is, is that our soil temperature is so warm right now that these seeds will come up super, super quickly. Um, and the other thing about planting this time of year is because it's usually so hot, um, and dry here in particular, we do have to pay a little bit more attention to keeping them watered. So I do have a drip system. You can see some of the tubing in this bed right here, but with the brand new seeds, I'll probably come out here in the mid late afternoon and give them another little um, dousing of water with the hose. It waters in the morning. And that way I make sure that my, um, area doesn't dry out. So that's just something to be mindful of. Also, if you're planting in the midsummer and you want to do things like greens, like today I'm planting the spinach in another bed, you want to make sure to provide a little bit of shade, a little reprieve for those type of crops. The peas will be fine right out in the full sun. So I'll put a list of um, crops that are really good this time of year down below uh, in the description. You can also do things like um, cucumbers and summer squash, things that are shorter day, uh, but you can't do things like um, winter squash, uh, pumpkins, things that take a a really really long amount of time um, okay so now I want to get right into the planting the first thing I'm gonna do because I've had crops in here growing I'm going to amend the soil with a little bit of biotone which is a starter fertilizer add some nutrients back in to the soil that's really important to keep your plants happy so this spring I actually dumped a whole bunch of biotone in all of these beds and tilled it in today I'm just gonna do it by hand I'm just gonna spread a little bit and then work it in with my fingers just because I have the drip tubing running around in here and I don't really want to have to lift all of that up and redo. I'm gonna move this too. Isn't this cute? This is a willow cloach from Gardener's Supply. It's not protecting anything in here right now. It's just for looks. So I'm planting all the way over here and to this tomato plant here. That's probably good. I'll just work it in like this and then we'll plant our seeds. Okay, so we're gonna do my peas first, and I'm just gonna make four rows right here in this area. I've got four lines of drip tubing. You know what, I'm not gonna have enough seed for four rows. Scratch that, I'm gonna make three rows. Okay. And then I'm just gonna place these seeds about every two inches. Ooh. I maybe could have done four rows. <laughs> oh well, I have extra seeds for next year. Now I'm gonna kind of push them down in a little bit and cover them over with soil. Okay, that section's done. And then this little area right here, I'm gonna plant my zinnias. I thought it would be pretty to have like a crop, crop, and then some colorful flowers in between. Let's see, I think I'll do my rows maybe three rows. And you just follow the instructions on the packet. These need to be planted about a quarter inch or so, maybe a little tiny bit deeper. That'll help them stay a little bit more moist this time of year when it's so hot. These are like really 
lofty, really light seeds right here. A little bit harder to uh, space proper. Here we go. Easy to thin though. Now I'll cover those back over and then we'll move over to the other bed to plant our spinach. This is the bed I'm planting my spinach in and this is kind of a perfect example of a way that you can maximize your space. So this is a wire A-frame trellis from Gardener Supply as well. Um, and I've got a cantaloupe growing on one side that I'm gonna train to go up and over, which will make this area a little bit shadier, which for greens, especially when it's really hot, they benefit from having a little bit of shade. So that makes it to where I can have a cantaloupe growing in here and a bunch of spinach. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add in my biotone, plant my seeds, and then I will water everything in that I just planted. And I'll do four rows. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot work with seeds with gloves on. I like to seed my spinach a little bit heavier because I usually do harvest it when it's a little bit younger and that way it's just more, much more thick. So to water it in, I mean, it's just fairly simple. You wanna make sure that you have something that softens the flow of water so you don't dislodge the seeds you just put in the ground. And I'm just gonna water it well to make sure that the whole area is settled in, in both spots. And like I said, all of these uh, raised beds are on drip, so they will be watered every single morning. And then I'll come back out in the afternoons on really hot days until they're up and established a little bit more and do the same thing I'm about ready to do right now. So see how nice and soft that is? It's like perfect. Nothing moves around. So that's pretty much it to planting in the summertime. There's not a whole lot to it and you don't need a big open space like this to plant something. If you've got little areas in your garden where you can tuck something in, like if you have room for a basil plant somewhere or a little patch of beans or a couple of pea plants, I mean, just like tuck things in. That's what makes a garden really fun and kind of whimsical, I think. And it gets you more production out of your garden space. Um, so I think the most important things to know about midsummer planting is to re-introduce um, fertilizer into your soil, re-energize it, add compost if you want to, biotone like I did today, um, and recharge it a bit. Um, um, plant things that have a maturity date to where um, you will actually get a harvest and you can try to push it a little bit. I try to do it every year. Like with my peas, I think I've got about 60 days before the average first frost date. My peas are 68 days. I will probably get peas, I'm guessing. Um, so don't be afraid to fudge the lines just a little bit. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful and inspired you to go plant some more stuff out in your vegetable garden and we will see you in the next video. Bye.